Good afternoon, members of the media, and thank you for coming. Less than one year since we celebrated the 50th anniversary of universal adult suffrage in Bermuda and the 50th anniversary of our Constitution, Bermuda is confronted with views and recommendations expressed in London that defy the very nature of our relationship with the United Kingdom. In 2012, the White Paper from the United Kingdom government confirmed that each territory has a unique community and it is for the territory to shape the future of its own community." End quote. The right to vote in Bermuda has evolved to our democracy of today, where Bermudian men and women cast their votes freely in elections for the candidate of their choice. There are still many Bermudians alive today who experience firsthand being denied the right to vote based on property ownership or gender. And when those things were done away with, a system of undue paperwork and administration was used to frustrate those who would express themselves at the polls. Here we stand 16 years after the first true election of universal adult suffrage of single seat constituencies with one man, one woman, one vote of equal value forced to take a stand to defend the right of Bermudians to determine the direction of our own country. The United Kingdom government has two months to determine how or if it will proceed with the Foreign Affairs Committee's recommendation. The motion tabled in the House today is necessary for three important reasons. First, to make Bermuda's position clear on the recommendations. The report comments on the adoption of a public register of beneficial ownership for Bermuda and the issue of voting rights for British citizens resident in Bermuda. On beneficial ownership, our position is a bipartisan one endorsed by successive governments. We will adopt a global standard for a public register of beneficial ownership once one is implemented. Two, to signal the political unanimity of Bermuda on the issues. It has often been said that while we may disagree internally to the world, we must present a united front. The motion table today provides an opportunity for all elected members of the House to speak with one voice in the debate and with their vote. This united front will convey to the UK government that on these issues, Bermuda is of one accord. Finally, to meet the growing threat the report represents, some have sought to downplay the report as only a committee report that should be taken, that should not be taken as the views or intentions of the UK government. Ordinarily, this would be a valid argument, and we might be persuaded that Brexit and other matters would occupy the attention of ministers in Whitehall. However, this is not so. In a move that not even the UK government was prepared for, a cross-party amendment has been introduced into the House of Commons in London and is slated for the report stage under procedure today. The amendment seeks to further force the issue relating to public registers of beneficial ownership, and we understand that its support is considerable and growing. It seems that some members of the House of Commons Foreign Affairs Committee are not content in waiting for the government to take a position on the report's recommendations, and they are moving with haste to force their implementation. Since 1968, the relationship between Bermuda and the United Kingdom has matured. The term self-governing has become our way of life as we elect our leaders, determine our immigration policy, fund our government and services from our own taxation and revenue generation, and most importantly, make our own laws. Our constitution and the body of laws that support it are homegrown. This principle is now at stake in this relationship, and on this point of principle, there cannot be any erosion of rights. A mere seven years after the White Paper's indication that overseas territories are responsible for shaping the future of their own communities, the recent Foreign Affairs Committee report casts aside the need for such cohesion and asserts not only a right to vote, 
but also the ability to hold elective office for BOTC and UK citizens with virtually no additional qualifying criteria. This is a willfully ignorant suggestion that ignores decades of institutionalized privilege and one that would further divide this community along the lines that we are determined to erase. I look forward to leading the debate on this motion and tracing for the people of Bermuda and reminding some and perhaps informing others of the history of voting rights in this country and setting out in the clearest possible terms that Bermuda in this 21st century will not be turned back to the worst excesses of what we thought was a bygone colonial era. Thank you. I don't fear UK encroachment because I understand the position of our Constitution and I think the UK government understands the position of our Constitution. However, persons that are on the Foreign Affairs Committee do not, are not uninformed of Bermuda. They are persons who have been to Bermuda. They are persons who have interacted with our government um, on many occasions. I just think that they happen to have a different view. They view Bermuda as a province of the United Kingdom that they can govern and legislate for from uh, Westminster. We do not agree with that perspective and we are going to make it very clear in this House and I expect to receive unanimous support on this particular motion mm -hmm. that it is for us to make our own laws and for them if they want to uh, be colonial then they need to go back to a different era. It is not for today. Mm -hmm. We believe that we have a unique constitutional relationship. This is the exact same reason why orders in council were able to be extended to other overseas territories on issues such as capital punishment, but in Bermuda we were required to pass our own laws inside of our own parliament to do so. We do have a different constitutional relationship, but as I said, it is willfully ignorant of persons on the Foreign Affairs Committee to suggest otherwise. But here's the fact. The fact is that Bermuda is still an overseas territory, which is a very cute way of saying a colony. We've enjoyed a relationship for the last 50 years where the government has respected our ability and our constitution insofar as we have the ability to make our own laws. It seems as though if that view in the United Kingdom is changing. So what we want to do is make it as clear as possible so that they understand the view of Bermuda and then the ball is in their court. The I word does not work in the discussion at all. Right now, what we are talking about is a particular sense. We have a constitutional relationship right now with the United Kingdom. There are certain persons inside the House of Commons that believe that we should have a different relationship and we should serve as a province of the United Kingdom. If the 50-year settlement between our constitutional affairs will change, then I think that the people of Bermuda will have a different discussion. The motion that we've laid down is calling on the UK government to reject the recommendations. However, as we have seen, there are elements inside the UK uh, House of Commons that wish to push these things on us despite what the government wants to say. So it is a new and dangerous territory that we're in. But from the perspective of the government, we are going to stand by our principles. We are going to stand by the Constitution which we currently have, our current constitutional settlement, which says that the UK cannot legislate for our own affairs. And if the United Kingdom changes that position, then we'll have decisions to make here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.